Hi folks, in this video I tell you everything you need to know about Camping World, sales and service. Let's get to it. Check out our latest RV and camping related gear at our Amazon storefront. Link in video description. So for those of you that don't know, I'm Lou from Living Our Dream Now. And Melody and I own a 2019 Cougar Fifth Wheel 310RLS. Um, and we bought it from Camping World. So why did we buy an RV from Camping World? Well, uh, we had watched YouTube videos for probably about five years prior to retirement. Uh, I retired in at the end of 2018, and this was a pretty big step for us. We had a travel trailer previously. We've R RV'd for about a decade prior to retirement, and uh, we wanted the RV that our dream RV going into retirement. So we had pretty much decided on what we wanted, the floor plan. We knew we wanted a fifth wheel. And th this Cougar that we ended up buying from Camping World fit the bill. Uh, we had narrowed the floor plan down to two different RV manufacturers. Uh, Keystone was one of them. Uh, the Cougar, and the other was Grand Design. So we were bouncing back and forth between those two RV manufacturers. And so we knew what we wanted. I wanted to try to get the RV in hand so I could do all the upgrades that I wanted to do to it uh, prior to going into retirement. So it is May of 2018. Uh, we uh, it, Before I retired, we would go to Myrtle Beach State Park every year around Memorial Day. And uh, so this was no exception. And there is a camping world down there. Um, so a couple days before our camping stay at Myrtle Beach State Park was to end, uh, we went in for some camping supplies at Camping World. And I had never thought about buying an RV from Camping World. At the time, there, was, uh, there were no camping worlds that are near um, our home in West Virginia, uh, as a side note, they just put one in many years after we bought our RV off of Camping World. But um, uh, at the time, uh, there were no Camping Worlds in West Virginia, so you'd have several hour drive to get to the nearest Camping World. I never considered Camping World uh, to buy an RV. And But we were in Myrtle Beach and we go in to get supplies and we we wanted to look at the Cougar model and see how much it cost a Camping World. We had been pricing them all over the country and wouldn't you know that the Myrtle Beach Camping World, the Camping World of Myrtle Beach had the model we wanted for about 10,000 less. Yes, you heard me right, $10,000 less. And so that got our attention. We uh, did a walkthrough, um, and shortly after we did the walkthrough, uh, we really liked the, the fifth wheel that we ended up purchasing, and uh, we started the sales process. And this is one of the major things that I wanted to deliver to you in this video, is uh, some insight as to the Camping World sales process. Uh, understanding the process now, if I were to ever go back to Camping World to buy an RV, I don't know whether I would or not. It depends on what the base price of the RV was. This understanding the sales process will save you money. I'm going to, in this video, I'm going to end up showing you the bill of sale. I'm going to walk you through some of the uh, contractual documents that uh, I, I ended up purchasing. Uh, some additional services off of Camping World during that sales process. And uh, so I want, in this video, I want to impart to you um, how you can save some money 
going through the sales process. After you finish with the salesman out in the lot, you'll go through a series of people, at least we did at the Camping World in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. The, the first thing you're going to talk about is the trade-in, right? Because that's what I was interested in. I, I want to get to the bottom line of what this RV is going to cost me. And so the first thing we talk about is the trade-in. Well, the trade-in, they give me a very good price for the trade-in. That process for the trade-in didn't finalize until the next day when I could go back, sleep on it overnight after we've been through the sales process. And I'm going to come back to that sales process. But uh, we finished the sales process where you're deciding on what add-ons you want. Then we went back and slept overnight at the campground at Myrtle Beach State Park. I hooked up my travel trailer and then uh, pulled it up to Camping World in Myrtle Beach so they, they could inspect my um, 2009 Cougar travel trailer for the trade-in, to lock in the trade-in value. And it came in, it was just about half of what they initially told me they would give me for the trade-in. They came up with this long laundry list on day number two of the sales process of uh, what, uh, wasn't perfect with my 2009 uh, Cougar travel trail. There was some water damage that I was oblivious to uh, that they had found. And, you know, you're, it's all the travel trailer that I was trading in was about 10 years old. So uh, that was that was a letdown uh, because you you hit your your programming in what they told you on day one for the trade-in and that doesn't, yeah, they, they're probably giving you a top dollar when they quote you for the trade-in on day one. But when you bring your your trade-in in for inspection, uh, chances are they're gonna find something wrong with it. And they did with mine. And so just kind of expect that. I wouldn't I wouldn't be set on the top dollar amount that that Camping World tells you uh, for uh, the trade-in value uh, prior to inspecting your trade-in. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The second thing to keep in mind in the sales process, it is a grueling sales process. I want to say it was three or four hour sales process, jumping from multiple offices, multiple people, and they're walking you through um, uh, everything from uh, the equipment that you're going to need to go with this travel trailer. For instance, uh, I'm buying a fifth wheel. Well, I had a travel trailer before, so I need a hitch installed on my truck to pull a fifth wheel. And so there, there's, there's going over the equipment options, and and uh, in addition to the equipment options, there were additional add-ons that I wanted to make to the travel trailer and uh, as a condition of purchase, I wanted the, the work done prior to me leaving in like two days. And so after we got through selecting all the equipment add-ons we wanted, then they started to talk to us about warranties. The, ex the extended service plan that Good Sam offers, there was a, a paint and uh, gel coat protectant and fabric conditioner that they could put on. And we had a pr previous problems with our travel trailer. It was faded, the stickers were peeling off and I ended up removing the stickers. So, you know, that was something I was interested in. There were many different things they took us through to include road service. Uh, a lot of the things I rejected um, because, you know, it was obvious to me that they're loading you up with all these extras. But I did end up getting an extended service plan, uh, the Good Sam road service, I believe for five years, and the uh, gel coat protectant, fabric protectant, which wasn't cheap. It was like almost $1,200. I think it was like $1,195. We'll look at the, the sales contract. Um, but these are things that you need to take in consideration when you're going in for that grueling sales 
uh, regimen that they're going to put you through, you are mentally wore out when you get done with that process. At least we were. So what drew us in was the price. We had not seen a better price. They were a full $10,000 below uh, where the price that we had seen anywhere else in the United States. So that was the draw. That's why we were going through the sales process at Campy World. So let me cut right now to the sales contract. And I'm going to show you some specifics uh, in the sales contract. So this is the sales contract. I'm going to go down through here real quick. And there's some money saving information that I'm going to point out to you in this contract. Um, or the bill of sale. This is what I paid. This was the base price of the RV, 51000 and some change. The trade-in allowance, they gave me $7,500 for my 2009 Keystone. Uh, travel trailer and by the way the day that I brought it in uh, for to be inspected in the same that same day that it was the second day of the sale um, I ended up driving by the end of the day I ended up driving the new fifth wheel off the lot and took it back to uh, Myrtle Beach State Park um, they had sold my 2009 Cougar. I had it outfitted the boondock. I left the inverter in it. I left the uh, battery bank that I had installed in it. They had it sold to a new customer that very same day that they inspected it for the trade-in. Let's go over here. Freight, just like with like a new car, you see a charge for a delivery charge to the vehicle. That's what this is. Uh, PDI fifth wheel, that's to inspect the RV from the manufacturer after they receive it. The hitch miscellaneous. This was the fifth wheel hitch that I needed installed on my Dodge Ram so that I could pull the fifth wheel. I had a travel trailer before. And so this, this wasn't only the hitch, it was the installation and it was all the additional things that I wanted installed on my fifth wheel. I boondocked and I had them take the spare tire out. They, uh, I selected a, it's a plastic container for a new battery bank. I had them put four AGM batteries in. Uh, later on, I would replace those with Battleborns, but I did that myself. Uh, there were a number of other things, backup camera, the device that goes inside your truck so you can see to back up. All, that's all wrapped it up into this $4,200. So not a bad deal for all the additional equipment I uh, received. They even put an inverter in and wired it. Uh, all the labor is wrapped up in that $4,200 as well. Uh, and they got all this work done within a two day time period. So the three things I wanna point out to you here, let's start with roadside assistance. I carry two different RV roadside assistance plans. One's AAA. And this one here that I purchased is the Good Sam roadside assistance. That's five years. I paid $619. I'm on my fifth year, have not used it. And that's because I there are instances where I would use the Good Sam, but I haven't run into one of those instances yet. There are other instances where I would use my AAA Premier RV. And I usually use the AAA first. There are instances where I would use my good SAM roadside assistance first. But again, I haven't run into that particular need to do that. Uh, without going into detail on that, suffice to say, I purchased five years of the good SAM roadside assistance for $619. I am going to renew that plan. Uh, so let's move to the paint protection. And I pulled my contractual document, and I'm going to walk you through here. This is what they call the first place finish limited warranty for recreational vehicles, exterior paint, interior and vinyl leather protection. I told you before, this is a grueling process, the sales process. Normally I read everything from front to back. They're throwing so many documents at, at you. I did not read this document from front to back. So you can see up at the top here, I paid $1,195 for them to spray this protective coating on the exterior of my vehicle and to spray the fabric inside the vehicle, inside the RV. So what does this do? Well, if you read the fine print, one, 
uh, where you're listening to the salesman. The salesman is demonstrating stuff that he's got stuff in his office that he demonstrates that how well this stuff works. But it tells you in here that uh, verbal representations don't mean anything. Uh, the only thing you can go on is by the written words of this contract. And this contract tells you that if your paint fields or your decals that are affixed to your gel coat on your RV, if they fade, the only thing this warranty is going to do is they are going to buff it out and reapply the same protectant that they initially applied. That's your recourse. That's what the warranty's for. They're not, it doesn't say, it specifically says that a remedy is not to paint or re gel coat, uh, apply new decals. No, none of that. They're going to buff it and reapply the same protectant that they initially applied. That is what the warranty's for. So to pay $1,195 for that, and they, they do push this in the, in, in the sales process, uh, I would not get this again. Read the fine print, folks. Now, I'm going to take you back here, and I'm going to talk to you about the vehicle service contract. I paid, I'm in, I am in my fifth year of that service contract right now. I have used it. I paid two thousand six hundred forty dollars for it. Uh, I did that because this is a uh, you know this is a hefty purchase, and um, beyond the one year manufacturer's warranty, there is no warranty unless you get this extended service contract. Uh, some people call it a RV extended warranty. It really isn't an extended warranty. It's an extended service contract, and it doesn't cover the same things that your initial one-year warranty would cover. Let me talk to you about this extended service contract through Good Sam. So after the first day of the uh, sales uh, experience, I went home that night. We slept on it. I did some research online. I found Good Sam extended service plan online that you can just purchase online and that plan was like a thousand dollars less than what uh camping wor world was quoting me so i went back the next day and i talked uh to the salespeople and i i told them you know i can buy this online uh, the same good sam extended service plan for five years uh, for like a thousand dollars less, and the and the the person told me, well, what you can buy online isn't the same as what we sell in the dealership here. And I says, well, you know, uh, I'll, I'll just go online then and buy the one that's online because you know this is just too too expensive for an extended service plan. And so the person comes back and says, well, if I can offer you my contract for the same price that you can buy online, will you buy it? And I said, yes, I will. And so that's how I wound up with the Good Sam extended service plan for like a thousand dollars below what the, what, what the salesperson had initially quoted me. So that tells you what kind of markup there is on these extended service plans. Uh, I'm in my fifth year of that extended service plan I have recuperated some money from it, um, but and I did have some major RV work that needed done, I, and I've dedicated an entire video to the RV extended warranty, Good Sam extended service plan, uh, because I do go into some details and I show you the contract and my experience with the uh, Good Sam extended service plan. And you can click on the video uh, link that you see on your screen, and I'll give you all the information on the Good Sam Extended Service Plan. I hope you got something out of this video. That's why we make them. If you like this video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you down the road.